Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Pierre and this is Simple Homebrew. Today I'm doing a Mangrove Jacks Craft Series Brew Pouch. It's a recipe number five, passion fruit and preach cider. Preach? It's not a preach, it's peach. That'll do. <laughs> Stick around if you want to see more. As I said in the start of this video, I'm doing a passion fruit and peach cider, recipe number five by Mangrove Jacks. So we're gonna get into it. Now, I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna do something a little bit different today, guys. I've decided that uh, working with sanitizers and chemicals to clean all your products and items out is quite harmful to the, the skin in your hands. Now, I have really dry skin, and the problem with that is my hands are cracking and the cuts are just forming in all the all the wrinkles anyway what I want to do is protect my hands from here on in and in turn I'll probably protect the brew as well um, I've got some what we call nitrile gloves black disposable nitrile gloves now these will protect my hands and also protect my beer from my own sweat and whatever else I've decided to do this mainly because I'm sick of having sore hands and cracked fingers. So now, from here on in, I'll be brewing with black gloves on, nitrile gloves. So this should make my brewing experience even better now. I know it's a bit strange having black cut gloves on, but I think that's a new good step towards better hygienic brewing. As some of you know, I use no rinse sanitizers like Stellasan, and uh, it's basically all I've ever used, and it's been nothing but perfect for what I do. Uh, we have had this pouch sitting around for quite some time now. I wanna just throw a bit of sanitizer over it, just so when I cut the bag that any bacteria that's on it, will sort of nicely and quietly dissipate. When I use them, I also use stainless steel scissors. With a, well, I mean, there's a bottle opener ridge there so you can actually grab your bottle and open something up with it. That's what the ridge is for. Anyway, nonetheless, so what I'm gonna do is get my mixing pot ready, which is my stainless steel boiler. I've had this for a very long time, four years now that I've been brewing. I bought this one when I first started. I wanted to do brew in a bag and it worked out beautifully. Uh, it, did work out that the pot was a little bit too thin in the material and took a long time to hold it, to boil basically. So I stopped doing it and I bought myself, as you know, a grain fiber system. So one of the first things I have to do is open this bag and have a look at what's inside it. And when I cut it, just, so it show, just to show you, you cut it below the, the uh, melted, uh, you probably can see on that camera, cut it below this line just under it because there are instructions and everything inside this bag that you need. Gently cut it, don't tip it over because there's a fluid straight directly to this seam. So that, pop that aside, open her up. On this side you can see all the instructions. There's some clearing agents, that one's, uh, that's actually peach and passion fruit flavouring. The yeast you will need to use which is, oh no, it's a sweetener, that's a sweetener. The instruction manual, the yeast we're going to use is a cider yeast, and that's all I can see there. That's, that's about all we have on that side. And on this side, I can smell it already. It is beautiful. I can smell the peach. The peach is fluently coming out, just flowing out of this bag and just making it beautiful. Oh, yum. Looking forward to that one. What I'll do is now is just put that aside. I need to dissolve some sugars. So basically, with this kit, you need to add brewing sugar. I've got a bag, a one kilogram bag of uh, dextrose, which is just fine sugar, that I'm gonna put into this pot and dissolve. I'll just open her up. And this is gonna be dissolved using hot water. So the best thing to do is to pour the sugars in first. Putting this sugar in will help your yeast eat more so they can produce more alcohol. It's gonna be about 4.8%, hopefully, and uh, it's probably gonna work out really nice in that aspect. Um, I can, however, now pour my Mangrove Jacks concentrate that I'm smelling so succulently. Right now I can pour that in because it's all gonna get mixed together. The reason why I'm putting this in a pot first, I am not keen on throwing hot water in plastic 
fermenters as they will melt. So let's pour it in. I am going to rinse this out. So there's a whole heap of uh, nice fluids in there still waiting. I will put some hot water in here and I'll put a little bit in here and swill it out a little bit. I might actually get some cold water later and rinse it out with cold water. So that's about two kilograms or two liters of hot water. Grab my clean spoon, I'll just give it a quick sanitize as well, even though it is 100 degrees Celsius water. Just give it a bit of a sanitize just to be doubly sure. And we'll mix it all in. I'll stir this until it's all dissolved and then I'll start working on the fermenter. What I'm doing there is just um, sanitizing the lid as well, just so that if there's anything on there that could be a problem, it won't go into the, the brew either. We want it all to be sanitary. One more spray. Let's throw that on top. Pop this little item aside for a sec while it's sitting there, let it dissolve. I now need to dissolve a Camden tablet. Now, usually I just drop it in and let it dissolve, but I found last time I did it, uh, there was a big tablet still sitting in there after I finish brewing. So it doesn't dissolve that readily. Readily, This half Camden tablet will help dissipate any of the chlorine and chloramine in your municipal water. It really does help you brew. It helps my brew. I've had oh, much better brew since I've done it. Takes out the, uh, or neutralizes the, the chemicals that are in there to kill bacteria. And uh, really helps with your brewing. So I always throw half one in. Used to throw a whole one, but it's, there's no reason to throw a whole one. I crush it in the cup and then pour hot water to dissolve it uh, and that works a treat. So that's done. I now have to get my fermenter ready. I have a, we'll use this one, I have a chubby, all sanitized, ready to go. All I need to do now is pour, I oh, know I put about 18 litres of cold water in there from the tap. First I've got to get rid of the, sanit uh, the sanitizer. I don't know if I said this to you guys before. I really like these chubbies. Um, the good thing about them is their little opening. I know some of you don't like them. Oops. <laughs> I've just got that all over the TV. Would you believe it? Anyway, sorry about the noise. Um, let's try again. Um, some of you have said you don't like it because you can't get your hand in there. The actual idea of it is starting to rain. The actual idea of it is you can't get your hand in there to stop you scratching. The other idea is that the pressure can be uh, implemented much better in it. The smaller the opening, the less, more pressure you can get in, basically. Uh, and if you can't get your hand in there to scrub it with a scrubbing brush or anything like that, there's much less chance of scrubbing the sides and ruining the sides and having bacteria all over. Sorry, I'm looking at a TV that has water all over it. I'm going to just quickly wipe it off. Oh, gee. All right. There you go. All right, so the reason why they have small openings, this is my opinion anyway, uh, uh, the fact is that they don't want you scrubbing the inside of it. So all you do is rinse it with a PBR, which is um, a, 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 a brew house cleaner, and that's it. You don't need to put your hands in there to rub the edges. If you do that, you risk scratching this inside and creating pockets for bacteria to stay in. When you sanitize your fermenter, it won't get into those little cracks and kill the bacteria that's in there. So that's a really good reason why you have a small opening to stop your hand getting in there. That's my opinion. Right, I want to put water in this. I need to get rid of whatever I've got left in there. So there is no rinse sanitizer still in the bottom. Yeast thrives on it, so don't stress about it being in there. And now I will put a funnel in. Actually, no, I won't. I'm going to fill it up to about, I'm going to put about 18 litres. It's going to be 23 litres. I'm going to put 18 litres in. All right, that's 18 litres going to my fill meter So now I'll pop in um, a funnel. All right, so I'll pop in my funnel. Put sanitizer on it so I don't get... Uh, that 
anything. I have washed all this, by the way. It is clean. I just put sanitizer on just to be doubly sure. With that, give this a quick turnover. Looks like it's really well mixed through and stirred. Yeah. It's not that heavy. I'm just being a whinger. Get to clean it later. We'll pour that in. Now, I haven't got a measuring strip on this, so... It's going to be somewhat a guess. That's in. Uh, so, I haven't got a measuring strip on this, so I don't know exactly how much I've got in there. We've got 24 years or 5 minutes. So, I have an old chubby that I melted, and uh, Kid King will find it kind enough to just give me a whole new one. Um, just for the sake of being nice. <laughs> Great of them, it really is. And they're a good product too. I have a measuring strip that is accurate. So I'm going to put that next to this so I know how much fluid I have in there because I'm a dingbat. So the 23 litre mark is there. And I'm almost there. So that's a problem. I'm right on 23 litres. I wanted to rinse out my bits. So I'm going to just put... I'm going to put just a little bit more water in this so I can get the best, the rest of the goodness out. There's lots of goodness in there, look. And I don't want to lose it. Because I'm at 23 litres, and it's going to have to be. <laughs> it's all right, it'll work fine. So right now, all we do is add the yeast that comes with it, the cider yeast, I'll take that out. So I'll quickly tear that yeast off. Well, it's got a bit of a powdery thing to it. Like I said in past videos, this has a nutrient in it. Oh, it smells really nice. It smells like lullery. So that can go in. It's like a little powder or something in with the kit. So that's interesting. I wonder what it is. I'm gonna taste a little. Ready? It does, it tastes like lollies. Interesting. So the cider yeast has been put in. Now we're gonna have to add our cider sweetener. This one I'll have to cut, so I will find the scissors. I will the scissors. So I'm putting the whole thing, like I said, I want it to be sweet. So we're gonna make it sweet. Now this is artificial sweetening. Works, works a treat, I like them. I reckon these, these kits are great, so I don't care. That's it. Now all I have to do now is put my airlock on, my other bits that I need to actually ferment. Soak it wet. As you know, this is no rinse sanitizer, so you can handle it. Throw it in. That's done. I need to pop the lid on. Just like that. And we do have a pressure controller going on. Uh, I'll show you that in a sec. I'll quickly, quickly just shake this about. That got a little, uh, much easier to handle, by the way, than some of the other things out there. So that's all shook up. I'll show you. That's all shook up inside the barrel. That is looking to be a beautiful little drink. Um, I will try it, of course, in front of you guys when it's ready. <laughs> I was looking at getting a digital pressure reader for my kegerator because the um, dial ones, I couldn't see them properly. So I ordered some from uh, Kegland and I ordered the wrong ones. But I did find that they work with the blow ties. What I've done is I put the digital reader on the blow tie instead of that big bulky thing. I'm hoping that will do the trick. I'm sure it will. I'll throw this on the out post, which should be that one. Yes, it fits beautifully. And we've got to set the pressure to, I reckon, about 15 psi. And I like to leave it at 15 psi. That's what I like to ferment at. It gives me a little bit, carb bit of carbonation in my brew. That way I don't have to add more carbonation. It's uh, quite, a, quite a thing. So what I'll do now is just let this start fermenting. It will start fermenting for about in about half an hour to a day. And uh, once it starts pressurizing, I'll adjust the blow tie valve to let the pressure out in turn to make sure that I've got a, the right pressure in the keg, uh, in the fermenter. Or I can add a little bit of gas 
to pressurize it and get it to the pressure I want. I want to pressurize this before I add it because it will, it will just be from turn it on. <laughs> Nine. Whoop, there we go. Like I said, we want to be 15 psi. I'll close the valve once it reaches. Whoop, bit, bit more. All right, that's stopped it. Right, that's about 15 psi. It's actually quite accurate. 15.1 psi. How cool is that? Um, at least I know that the valve will open. I'm going to close it a little bit more, actually. It was seeping out a little bit still. I didn't want that to happen. All right, it's set, stabilized at about 14.6. That's enough. I know it's going to come back up. I'll put this in the, I'll put this in the corner, leave it there for a week or so, let it ferment. Um, it's going to ferment at... Oh, I forgot to tell you! All right, as you might have seen in the video previous to this one, I received a temperature controller from Michael Lead. He just sent it to me as a, a gift. Uh, he's just such a nice bloke. It's really good of him to do that. Absolute champ, mate. I really, really appreciate it. I'm going to use this on this unit. I'm going to throw the temperature probe. Wow, I might not be able to. I think I'll use it on the next one. Um, Oh, I haven't got a temperature. Oh, I can probably do that, even though I've got my things set up over here. This um, this chub, chubby, isn't made for using these things with. So I'm going to set this up. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this up over with my fridge. It's going to be my temperature controller for my fridge. And it's going to be there permanently. And that's where I'll do all my temperature controlling when summer comes because it's coming up to summer and we're going to need it i do have a different one that i've had for quite some time now i'll leave it where i've got it set up and that'll work a treat all right michael your champ this is going to be awesome i'm going to relish using this cheers Okay, it's finished fermenting and ready to go. I fermented it down at 20 degrees constantly in my house uh, and it went okay. Uh, it's been three weeks since I started it and that's as clear as it's gonna get. I'm not gonna cold crash it. I'm gonna put it into a keg and put it in the fridge and hopefully it crashes down and clears out over time. All right, so we're about to, so it's time to put the uh, flavoring in before we transfer it to the keg. So I have let the gas out of the keg, open the lid. <laughs> ah, it still smells very I've cleaned this and scrubbed this and it still smells like pear because it had a pear cider in it and uh, it's finished I finished it I um, actually tipped half a quarter of it out because I didn't drink it all been there since Christmas time that one so this is the, the flavoring I'm just pouring it straight in oh, you can smell it it smells like just artificial flavor <laughs> oh it smells like passion fruit bloody wonderful right lids on I'm not going to film this part, I'm going to transfer my cider into my keg and we'll do a tasting. So we'll see you when I'm doing the tasting, cheers. Okay, we're at the end. Uh, I'm going to do a quick tasting. This is, I've got two samples, one from the fermenter and one from the keg. The keg had the flavour sachet put in, the fermenter didn't. So I'm going to try the fermenter one first. This one here. Awful smell. <laughs> it's, in that. it's just a very dry, uh, new, new beer or new cider smell. I'll taste it. I can't tell you, there's no scent at all that I can smell. It's just that, like a wine, alcohol, and that's about it. Mm. But flavor wise, not too bad. It tastes all right. It's got a bit of a tang, a uh, small tang on the tongue, but it's just um, a new make. It's nice and sweet. Um, it definitely needs that flavor satchel. Um, it actually isn't bad. It, it does have an apple flavour. And I guess a peach. I can't taste the peach at all. Um, maybe that's what I'm tasting is a peach, kind of. I cannot taste passion fruit whatsoever. 
but still drinkable. It's not ugly. It's got a little bit of carbonation in it from natural um, carbonation. The second one from the keg, colouring still the same, it should be anyway. Looking cloudy, but that will go in the fridge now and crash in the fridge for a few days. Then I'll start carbonating it. Um, this one straight away, you can smell, of course, you can put a flavour satchel in or sachet. I can smell the passion fruit now. Um, a little bit of peach, not much, but that's because of the flavouring capsule. Uh, uh, satchel. And oh my god, what a difference it makes putting a, putting a flavoured satchel in. If you didn't do that, it still is kind of drinkable, but it, the flavourings don't come out as much. It's still new make, needs a bit of time to age, maybe a couple of weeks to age in there. I'll pop it in the fridge and leave it. I'll come back to it when it's fully carbonated and ready to go. It's not too bad, not overly sweet either. I thought it would be very sweet, but it's just medium sweetness. It's not too bad, really nice drink. Um, again, we'll wait for a couple more weeks. Uh, it's not ugly, very, very quench, quenching, drinkable, and I'm sure it will get better as time progresses. So, not bad at all. Yeah, good. I'd like to finish this off to say thank you to my Patreon members for making this possible, and my YouTube members as well. They are making this more and more possible for me to do. Uh, the, the funds help me gather more products to be able to make in front of you so you guys can learn from it and I can learn as well. Cheers guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing and we'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.